The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and just who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, there was a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged up the wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put them on an animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell to the hands of robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. So just a, a little recap, we've been talking about what God commands when he calls people to come and follow and the urgency of what God wants us to do, that it's now because the harvest is plentiful, the labors are few, and God says, I need your help. So that's just a very brief summary of the last few weeks. And today we heard in our lesson what the commandments are. Do you remember what they are? You shall love the Lord your God with soul, mind, strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, do this and you shall live. But a lawyer, a person, said, okay, well, but what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, so what do you hear? And he said, and read in the law. And the lawyer said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and you shall love your neighbor and yourself. Do this and you shall live. Now the neighbor, the guy said, well, love God, love others. Sure, I got that. But this neighbor thing, just who is my neighbor? Just the, like the, person living next door to me and Jesus told them a story Jesus told them a story about an unknown person now we use the masculine in here there was a man and he but in the Greek or in the yeah in the Greek there is anthropos is human there was a human being that went into the wilderness this person has no name it has no identity in the story. We don't know if it's a male or female. We don't know if they were rich or poor, black or white. We don't know if they were from that area or not. We don't know if they knew the dangers of the wilderness or just saw it as a shortcut. We don't know if he went there willingly or if he was dropped off as a, a worthless human being. What we do know was that while he was out in the wilderness, which is not uncommon, a band of robbers, thieves, came and they beat him up. 
and, he le- and they left the person for dead. And we're like, well, that wasn't nice. That'd be a really cruddy story if it ended there. But voila, there was a priest who came, a holy person, one who knew the law, one who knew that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, the one who knew he should show mercy. But in Jesus' story, the priest passes by. We don't know why. We don't know if he was late for a meeting. We don't know if touching a corpse and he thought it, the person was dead is unclean and he would actually have to go like into isolated quarantine for a while. We don't know the reasoning. But we know that he passed by and left the person for dead. But then a Levite came. Now a Levite was more a common folk, but they were the teachers. They knew the prophets. They taught the people what the prophets said. They taught the people what the word of God were. They were people who were used to being in the wilderness. That's kind of where they hung out for a lot of the period of time. And the Levite came, saw the person and passed by on the other side. Again, we do not know why. We don't know if he had the same reasons as the priest, or maybe he wasn't a Levite, so he didn't think he was worthy of helping. We do not know. We just know that he was passed by and left for dead. Just a real recap of the last four weeks, where this story came into play There was a time when people said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. And God says, great. Oh, Lord, but I meant someday. I meant someday when I had the time and when I had the means and when I was a little bit more wealthier and when I had days off, when the kids got old. And God says, no, now. And they offer the excuses. And he goes, bid them shalom. Shalom help loving God, loving others to the point where we care for their natural needs that we pray for in the, the commandment, give us this day our daily bread. And the law is summed up with love God, love others. And you, you, God says, it's shalom. It's how do we treat other people. Back to our story. Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. There is a lot of people who are being left for dead. There's a lot of people who need our help. There's a lot of people crying out for mercy. And Jesus stops and asks each and every one of us, where are you in the story? Are you willing to help? There is a happy ending to the story of Jesus, just so you don't go away. There was a Samaritan. Now, a Samaritan weren't the most popular people. They were not light. They were the enemy. They were, if you think of the person that you like the least, multiply that by 10, and that's probably how they saw Samaritans. Okay? They were not good people according to some. But this Samaritan, this foreigner, this enemy in this area, came and saw pity on the person, anointed him, dressed his bandages, took him to an inn, and paid for his ongoing care. It was the least likely person to do that. And then Jesus asked the question, who was the neighbor? And he said, the one who showed mercy. And, he, and Jesus said, you're right. You're right. The one who helped. The one who was about shalom. The one who was about helping other people. People helping people. 
It's a shalom. I'm making sure everybody has enough food to eat. We're going to be having a food distribution here tomorrow. I'm going to do a little plug right now for that. Um, that is helping people who are hungry. We have people who are, have other needs that we're going to be hearing of in our community on the 18th of what are some of those needs. And all of it is about shalom. All of it is about people helping people, God helping people meet their needs. That's what this story is about. It's not a matter of how much do I do, how much can I do, what's the least amount that I need to do in order to be saved, to have eternal life. But who's the person that my gifts help their needs? It's as we did with the young children today. It's like the more that we use our gifts, and who has received at least one gift from God? Let's try that again. Every hand should be up. Who has received at least one hand, one gift from God? That we all have something to do, right? We all have at least one thing that we can do to help another person. It doesn't have to be moving mountains. It can be as simple as smiling and bidding hello. It can be as simple as bringing a food item for the food shelf. It can be as simple as helping out whenever we see a need or a person who could really use help, maybe even mowing their lawn. It doesn't have to move mountains. We just need to have the eyes of God to see and the heart to respond in mercy. God says, I give you a new commandment. You know, we couldn't keep the 300 or 600, however you want to read that, laws that are in the, the Bible. We have a hard time with 10. God narrowed it down to two. And now he's going, okay, here's the deal. I'll give you one. I'll give you one commandment. Love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another. I've had people say, why does God make it so hard? And I'm like, what's so hard about loving one another? Showing respect being kind, helping out. That's what God asks us to do. That's God's care for the world, that we can have a shalom world, a peaceful world, a world of God, and all God's people.